more time, we can get into that. So let's get started. Welcome, welcome. It's good to chat with you all for a while. Can you hear me okay? I've been having a little issue with my microphone. So if I come in and out, just feel free to don't chat it. Just unmute yourself and let me know. We should be fine. I think I have just not been restarting my computer enough. So <laughs> I did that in between classes. So we should be good. But let me know if you have any issue with me coming and going with the audio. All right, we're gonna move every muscle. We're gonna move every bone <laughs> and joint in our bodies today that we can, just so we can bring in some energy and some healing, right? So that's what it's all about, feeling good and feeling good together. So let's just settle in. I gotta take all these off the screen, hang on. And settle into our seat. And if we think about so much of our life, even if we're staying indoors, is outward focus, right? We look at the news, we talk to other people, we're thinking outward of ourselves. One of the lovely benefits of yoga is the inward focus that we have. So let's just take a deep breath in, exhale out, and come inwards, right? Sometimes when we come inwards, we start thinking about our to-do list, our worries, our fears, the busyness of our minds. We want to quiet that down. So we quiet the outsides of, of us. If you have news or anything like that on, shut that all off so we can come inwards toward ourselves. That way we can listen to all the sensations of our bodies. We just want to hit pause button on the to-do list, on the worries quiet ourselves. This is where the peace resides inside. Sit tall, take a breath. Exhale, release the breath. We're going to do that again. Inhale, breathe. Exhale, release. Great job. Another breath in. Take a deeper breath through the nose and then slowly exhale out, release. Now in through the nose. Open those teeth slightly and breathe out of your mouth. Good. Now that's called a letting go breath when we breathe in. And then as we exhale, we think, what is it we can let go of? Sometimes we get out of bed, feet hit the floor, and we pick up luggage. Luggage, not real, metaphorical. Luggage of worries and burdens and anxieties. And we carry them around all day and they're heavy. Can we just set those down with the breath? So as you breathe out, what can you release? Or sometimes it feels like we carry this backpack, heavy things, burdens, and we wanna take that off because we know worry doesn't solve anything. It doesn't change anything. So we use our breath to release and relax all of that, bringing in new breath, new perspective, prana, energy, and then we exhale and slowly let everything release. Good. One more big breath in, being mindful with that breath. Bringing in that prana and then exhale. So this is a very important time. The movements that we do of yoga, they're called asana. It's only one of eight parts of yoga. This breath work is called pranayama. It's another Meditation is another, and then there are five other parts. So this prana work, we could do this for an hour and we would have a wonderful day. So it's very important to do this. We can lower our blood pressure. We can lower our pulse rate. We can overcome anxiety and depression by breathing. It really is more therapeutic than what you might think. So take that big breath, expand your lungs. Good, exhale out, there's magic in that breath. So be still and enjoy a few more cycles. Good job. And let's open our eyes, sit tall, and with our tall spine, lowering our chin all the way down as far as we can, taking our time, chin slowly draws down. Tall, tall seat, find a nice stretch in the back of the neck. Now. Take a long inhale, a long exhale, letting go of worries, letting go of care. And we'll take our right ear over the shoulder. Maybe keep your eyes closed so you have that inward focus again. You're not 
looking at anything that's distracting. Roll your head through center and take the left ear over. Feel that gentle tugging and pulling. Good, over to the right, slowly back and forth. So think about how a clock tick, talk, right? Slow, a pendulum. It's not swinging swiftly back and forth, right? It takes its time. So I want you to take your time slow. Notice what you feel, right? And then when your left ear is over the shoulder, pause there. Take your right arm out midway between your arm, or sorry, <laughs> shoulder height and hip height. Spread your fingers and reach that arm toward the floor out the side of you. And you might feel some tingling sensation in your hand or in your arm. That's energy moving through you. Good job. Now just bring your hand and your chin through neutral and take it to the other side. So we have right ear of the shoulder and the left arm goes out midway. Spread those fingers wide now. Good work. Now we're gonna take it back with our left ear over, right arm out, and this time flutter your fingers. So it's like you're playing scales on the piano. Press, press, press to the keys. Flutter those fingers. Excellent, we're gonna take it to the other side again. So right ear of the shoulder, left, <coughs> left arm out, and move your fingers again. It's good to move through the fingers so we don't get arthritis there. Beautiful, hand to the lap, come back through center, chin to your chest, sitting tall. Now we're gonna take our hands and interlace our hands behind our head, head lowering, and bring your elbows in a bit. We're not gonna worry about touching them, they can be far out in your peripheral vision. We want light weight of the hands to stretch, stretch, stretch deeper into our neck. Not going too far where it's painful. Good job. Now keep breathing. And we want our hands around that second or third vertebrae on your neck. Support your neck there with your interlaced hands. And then lift your head up and gaze up. And support your resting head there with your hands. So kind of the pinky edge, the side of your hand. Rest your head. It weighs about 12 pounds-ish, 10 to 15, somewhere in there. Now we're gonna use that weight to get extension in our neck, stretch our back, open up our chest. There we go. Let's go back through neutral. Nice job. And then roll those shoulders up, back and around. Good job. We're gonna do some shoulder work today. We've warmed up our neck. We wanna warm up our shoulders here. The first thing we're gonna do for shoulders is the one everybody loves right? And we do it every single day. It's the slump. So everybody slump forward. Just bring those hands forward. We're going to round those shoulders forward. It feels good. You know why? Because we're not really doing anything. It's easy. Look at it, right? We're not using any muscles. We're just hanging out here. And this is what yoga teaches us. It teaches us how to engage our muscles. So we're going to go from non-engagement to rolling shoulders back, and we'll do the opposite of the shrug, uh, slump, which is the shrug. We're gonna take those shoulders up toward our ears and then back and down. So up, back, and down. Good, keep that flowing. Gonna do this a few more times. And we wanna remind ourselves, if you've been at the computer, anything that rounds you for driving, um, playing cards, reading, right, or rounded forward, make sure you're doing this too, taking your shoulders up, back, and down. Good, and then before you know it, you're being even Steven with your posture. You're going back and down as much as you're going forward and up. So yoga also teaches us to connect our minds with our bodies. Good, okay, now roll that there. We're gonna isolate on the right side. We're gonna go up, back, and around in the shoulder joint. Shoulder to the ear, roll it back and down. So you're noticing maybe my hand is turning in the direction of the shoulder girdle. So you can bend your elbow just a little bit, not a whole lot. I want to isolate this in the shoulder, so I'm not introducing the elbow joint. Arm is following the part of your shoulder. Just begin to move that shoulder joint and noticing what it feels like. Maybe you're hearing some popping and clicking. Good, now go all the way back to neutral and take this to the other side. Good, notice what that feels like to roll forward and back 
<clears throat> uh, sorry, up and back and not forward. Now this side for me, I have, um, it's a adhesion that's near my shoulder blade and I can feel it popping. I can hear it a little bit, but the more I do this, the less that happens, it gets lubricated, it gets broken up. So keep rolling around and notice your sensations. You might have something like that too. And maybe one shoulder feels tighter than the other, right? So we just notice that we wanna, or one side's looser, right? So just observe. Good. Now let's take both up forward, both forward. So get those arms going, moving into the upper back. Do you feel that? It's a bit of a stretch as we roll forward. Nice, now pause that and roll both of them back at the same time. We wanna go up, back, down, and around. Oh, we're getting warmer, we're getting blood flow, we're getting synovial fluid. Now, I want you to alternate, so one and then the other, almost like you're bicycling in those shoulders backwards, and then we're gonna start twisting a little bit. So as you roll the shoulder, look around, and now I want you to get into a bigger elbow movement, yeah. And we're gonna use the ribs, even the hips, if you wanna start taking this into like, oh, of a backstroke, and lift the sit bone and turn. So every muscle, every joint is working. Then lift the heel off the floor, keep the ball of the foot down. Now let's go forward. So settle your lower body and swim forward. I bet you were a swimmer when you were younger, right? Oh, and you, some of you still might be swimmers. If you swim, keep swimming. It's wonderful on the joints. It opens up the shoulder blades. It feels good. Keep going. Very good. Sit nice and tall. <clears throat> oh, all right, now shake it out. So we talked about the slump and what happens when we slouch forward. When we slouch forward, these pectoralis muscles get tight and constricted, and it restricts our lungs and our heart. The rhomboids in the upper back get elongated, overly stretched out and weakened. So what we wanna do is lengthen in the front and firm up and tighten in the back. So what we're gonna do is sit tall, take our arms overhead, bringing our arms to cactus position. Hopefully we can get our elbows in line with shoulders in that wrist in the same plane and not forward. That can be a little challenging. So we've got the arms at the 90 degree angle, elbow, wrist, fingertip, shoulder, and then draw those elbows back, but careful that you're not back bending. So lift the navel up a little bit, pull your front ribs back. When we hold a pose, we do not hold our breath. So keep breathing. Nice, so we want, we're going for a stretch of that chest there, and then hold your shoulder blades together. That's gonna firm and tone up those rhomboids in the back. There are muscles along your shoulder blades that get long and weak from rounding forward. We're gonna take a break and rest. So we'll bring the palms, the elbows together. Rest here, good work. And we'll do that again. So we're opening up, spread out your fingers for me, please. And take this back, 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 good. But don't back bend, pull your ribs back and lift the navel center up, sitting on both sit bones right in the center. Good work. So pull those shoulder blades back, it's like back cleavage, pull it back there. Excellent. If it's challenging, it means that those back muscles are pretty weak. So let's firm them up, keep squeezing, rest. Bring those elbows forward, palms together. Good job, rest it out. One more time, take it all the way out, cactus, and then squeeze that together a little bit. Feel the stretch of your chest. Now we're gonna do an alternate movement to, re to link the right and the left sides together. So right hand is going to touch our left shoulder and then we'll come back to center and the left hand is coming to the right shoulder. Good, we've done that. So now let's take our right hand over to our left knee. Good, and then center. Left hand crisscrosses to the right, nice. Good, so this time go ahead and take that and lift the knee. So as your right hand comes in, lift and tap, come back up, keep that cactus, left hand to the right knee. 
Nice. Now from here, spread those arms long. So we have life force reach. Imagine someone grabbing your wrist, pulling you right and left. Ooh, really like it. Good work. All right, now I want you to give a clap in front. <laughs> Come back to cactus. Right hand to the lifted left knee. And then press and point and flex your foot. So we'll get some brain work going. Press your knee and your hand into each other. Engage that leg. And then come back. Good. Left hand to the right knee. Push, point and flex. Excellent job. Release that and just shake. Get everything nice and relaxed. We're going to do our reaches, making more space in our joints so we have more freedom of movement. Reaching is going to stretch and bring our posture back into really nice alignment. Let's grab some water. <clears throat> now we're going to remember to extend as far as feels comfortable. And it's going to be like someone's gently pulling on your wrist, but we don't want the shoulder to come out of its socket. <clears throat> we're going to lengthen ourselves nice and long. So let's try that. Let's have feet on the floor. We're going to take our right arm palm bases up and the thumb leads. When we lift, we don't want to do this. We don't want shoulder up, so soften it. But imagine someone's pulling your wrist up, but you still keep that shoulder in its socket. Release, and then we're going to take it to the left. Nice. So we're just flowing here in a way that creates space, in a way that increases the range of motion. The more we lift and extend through the spine, the easier it will be to lift that arm. When we're slouching in a bucket seat, it's really challenging to lift the arm overhead. The more we lengthen like this, the less likely we are to have um, frozen shoulder. We're breaking up adhesions, getting synovial fluid in there, so everything flows nicely. Reach and reach. All right, now we're gonna go for axial extension. So both arms up, stretching up. So on the axis, think about the earth having an axis, our spine is our axis. So from the tail all the way up to the crown of the head, lengthen tall. And now think about somebody lifting your wrist, but you're gonna pull the ribs off your pelvis, not take shoulders out of the sockets. Good, nice and tall and straight. Now, go ahead and release that and just shimmy those shoulders forward, release your back and shimmy back. <laughs> Good. This is just a way to relax everything before we introduce our legs. So shimmy forward, feet flat on the floor, come all the way back. Good job, roll those shoulders back and down like we did early, sit tall, back to your tall seat and right arm's gonna come back up again. Good, you can bend your elbow if you need to and then release, good, everything is reaching. Left arm up, good, bring it back down, very good. Now right arm is gonna come up, release it and then the left. Don't take that shoulder up to your ear, nothing like this, release it, good. Now let's lower it and get the left leg lifting, flex your foot, strong leg, press through that heel, nice. And then the right leg, keep pushing out with the heel. Good, now our alternate, so the right and the left, sitting tall. Think about the tallest reach you can get with the arm still in its socket and that heel pushing away from you. Excellent job, reach and reach. This is so great for our posture. Now, we're gonna sit all the way back in our chair and both arms up, both arms up, all the way up. Axial extension, big, tall reach. Look how tall and how strong everybody looks. Nice, now we do need to be all the way back in our chairs because we're gonna lower our arms and take those legs out one at a time. Good, we get both legs up and now both arms up. So we make the L, letter L out for love. Feels so good, strong, right? Three, two, one, release and shake it out. Good job, guys. Excellent work, huh. roll that around. So that was our axial extension. Now we're gonna do some side reaches. So let's take our right arm out. The left hand's gonna hold on to the chair. And then we're just gonna take our palm up. We'll look up at the palm. And then bend that left elbow in lateral flexion over to your left. We're gonna take it over and then we're gonna pulse. So back out and then pulse. 
and pulse off to the side. Excellent. Good. Spread your fingers. Beautiful. Nice. Now take it all the way up again, straight up, lengthen your spine, and then bend that left elbow. Try to keep your shoulders really square, and then we'll look up past that right arm and pull our right shoulder back. Good job. Let's come up to center, left arm out to the side and come up, 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 bicep by the cheek, hanging on to the chair. We're gonna lean over, reaching back out. So we're pulsing here, stretching on that left side, pulse it a bit. Good, and bend and reach. Nice job. Now come on up, look at that left palm, reach for the ceiling and then lean over, square your hips and pull that left shoulder back and just hang here, no more pulsing. Right hand on the chair, deepest breath. Nice arc up and over. Look up past your uh, shoulder there. Good, now come on up. We're gonna take this right arm up and over. And it's as if there's something in front of you at the diagonal that you want very badly. You almost can touch it, but not quite. And then open and close the fist and feel what's going on there on the right side. Good job. Let's take this hand back to neutral left arm, kind of out and over and reach, reach, reach. Here, it's a sideways reach. We can tuck our chin, round our back. Can't quite touch something, but we're reaching and opening, close the fist. Super job. Okie doke. Let's come back through center. And we're gonna scoot ourselves forward a decent amount. So let's take our hands right out here in front of us, straightening out our spines after lateral. So we interlace. And we're going to tuck our chin, but the backs of your hands reach away. So you see your palms, curl your tail, tuck your chin. Now we're going to stretch into the shoulder blades by trying to pull the fingers apart, but we're not going to do it. We're just going to have that little tug of war there. Rhomboids, stretch them out. And then come on up to a tall spine. These hands are now going to come to our hip pockets. Is as if you're putting your hands in your pocket. So make sure you're enough forward, you can sort of flap your wings here. Both hands on your hips, and we're gonna do a little fluttery. Flutter those elbows, it feels good. Stretching the front of the chest, hands on the back pockets. What do I call this one sassy pants, because we feel sassy, don't we? If we were walking around the house like this, we'd feel sassy. Just open and close those wings. It really does stretch out the front of our chest. That's so good for our posture. And now just hug your elbows back there. Hug, hug, hug. Try not to back arch. Nice, shake those hands out. And life force reach. One of my favorite ones. Stretch out wide as you can. Now somebody's got your wrists on either side. Spread your fingers wide. Good, now take those arms like someone's pulling you and then flip the fingertips up toward the ceiling. Press the palms away. Elbows want to bend, let's try to keep them straight if we can. And then fingertips down toward the floor. Good, fingers to the floor, you got it. Feel that with forearms, nice long reach. And then fingers down, good. Now roll those ankles, or sorry, <laughs> your other ankles. Roll your wrists around backwards. Keep reaching, keep wiggling around in there and go forward. Good. Now release and shake. How are we feeling? Feeling nice and energized? This is the point of class today. Feeling energized. Now hands in front of us. We're gonna press those hands, roll those shoulders down, elbows up, forearms parallel. Work on bringing those hands together. Press, press, press. So when we bring our hands together in front of our hearts, this is called namaste. What does namaste mean? Well, what it means is, the translation is, I honor that which is of light and goodness and honesty and truth, all the positive benefits that are uh, uh, attributes that we have. We honor it in ourselves. We recognize it in others. And when we recognize the light, the truth, the wonderful things in ourselves and in others, 
That's what we focus on. We're all connected by that. We're united and we're all one. Isn't that lovely? All right, so we press really hard. Now, I want you to look at the back of one of your hands and really press there. You might see ligaments and bones maybe popping out because we're pressing hard. And then look at the other back of your hand. We're strengthening the fingers, the arms, and the hands while we press. Now bring everything into center, relax your shoulders, take those elbows as high as you can. Sit up tall, press the palms even more, shift your hands to the left as far as you can, torso and head right here in the middle. Don't twist, don't twist. Your shoulders stay square. Yeah, just your elbow, not your butt. Good, now come through center. Keep your head and your torso still. It's just your arm, like it's sliding along a shelf. So don't pull your right shoulder back. Stay level with the left. Good. Come back through center. Now we're going to touch our thumb to the heart and turn our fingers down toward the floor, working into the wrists. Now twirl those hands in. Notice which index finger you put on top and take that out in front of you. Good. And then overhead. Nice. Reach that up and overhead. Beautiful job. Stretch it out, reach all the way up. Now, with your palms facing out, can you touch your thumb side to the back of your head? <laughs> and then inhale up and big circle all the way back and down. One more time, palms together, shoulders relaxed, elbows up, palms press. Beautiful. Push to the right, but don't twist, just your elbow. Like you're nudging someone to the side of you, not behind you. Good, come back through center and just elbow to the left. That's great. Back to center, we're feeling that stretch. Thumbs to your heart, we're gonna flip the hands all the way down. This time, tuck your chin, look at the carpal tunnel area. Bring your hands back and it's the opposite index finger on top, press out. Stretch those arms and come up and overhead. Good, one more time. Can you take those palms inside out and touch the back of your head with your thumb? And then take it back up again. Good. This time, circle those wrists. That's a lot of work. Good job. Good. Shake out. If our hands are cold, this is how we get the circulation going. We just shake, shake, shake. Good. Get that energy flowing, get the circulation flowing. Shake to one side, the other, out in front, overhead, <laughs> all the way down, do the hula. I told you, we're moving all the joints, all the muscles, right? Pull it to the other side. Big wave overhead, just move. There we go, big macro movements. Shake overhead again, shake down. All right, now sit back in your chair, palms up. Do you feel a nice tingling sensation in those palms? Good, that's warmth, that's circulation swirling around. That's our life force, good work. All right, now. We're going to do some uh, nice bow work for our upper body. So working on our upper bodies, when our upper back rounds forward in the thoracic spine, this is called kyphosis. So I want you to sit tall, <coughs> shoulders back, take one of your hands to the back of your neck. This is our cervical spine and cervical spines curve inward toward our bodies, right? You feel that? You do not want a, a cervical spine that's straight up and down like a wall. We want it curving in, okay? Now take the back of one of your hands and feel your thoracic spine right between your shoulder blades. This one curves out away from us, so some curving is natural and perfectly normal, right? And then we have one hand to the low back. This one also curls in. If it's overly in a sway back where the sit bone or the um, hip bones are in front of the bottom of the pelvis, that's lordosis. It's too much of a sway, right? It's the opposite of kyphosis in the low back. So let's just get neutral. And we want to keep all of these lovely cur curves. We just don't want to extend this uh, thoracic curve, right? So usually kyphosis is caused by jutting our chins forward and then the shoulders round forward and come with it, right? And this also is 
weakening the back and tightening the chest. So we don't want to do that. Another way, say you just have this beautiful posture, another way you can get kyphosis is the tebral compression fractures, little holes in the bones in your upper back. If you have kyphosis from that, it's very challenging, if possible, to correct. If it's muscular, just from poor alignment, that we can correct. It takes work, and I'm going to show you some things to do. So if a doctor has told you you have kyphosis or you're just feeling a little too rounded, let's pay attention. We're going to sit tall and breathe. So I know it seems silly, but you can start correcting kyphosis just by directing your breath to the shoulder blade area. So think about a dolphin or a whale that has a blowhole. Breathe into your back, expand your back ribs as you breathe in. Feel that chest and back and then relax. Good, deep breath and exhale. Now those vertebral compression fractures, they don't really hurt, but it, it occurs and it shortens our stature. It rounds us forward in our posture. So what this breath is doing is making it more pliable back there again. Take the breath into the upper back. Maybe take your hand to your back so you feel your back expand as you breathe, just like we do with our tummy. Breathe right into the space and then soften. Feel if you can feel your back broadening there. This is one of the things we can do to strengthen. When you breathe and expand that muscle, it tugs against the bone and that bone gets stronger and it's less likely to get those little holes. Good. See how easy it is? All you have to do is breathe. We'll get really broad in the back there. So throughout the day, if you're feeling tense, take this breath into your upper back. It's a real eye opener. You can be very tense here. Good, have a very rigid posture. Open that up. Okay, now we're gonna take what's called a bellows breath. We're gonna start with our left arm. So we're gonna use a little bit more of our thoracic spine. So with this left arm, we're just gonna crisscross it over and touch the shoulder and then inhale it back up again, elbow line the shoulder, but pull it back. So you feel those rhomboids engage and then crisscross over and stretch. So you're working the thoracic spine, you're opening the chest, but we need to have a nice tall posture and we do when we do this in our back. So open that out, good, and crisscross. So, of our exercises to reduce kyphosis, the first thing is we take several breaths into the blowhole, stretching the muscle against the bone. Good job. And then we take single bellows breath. We start with one arm, crisscross it to the other shoulder, and then we take it to the other arm. Good, keep flowing. Inhale, open that out till you feel that stretch, yeah? And then crisscross it over. And when you pull this elbow back, imagine your right shoulder blade could cover your spine. Really pull that back. Inhale, exhale. You, four times to each side is plenty. Get some good breath into that back. Good, how does that feel so far? Nice. Now we're gonna add in a little cat cat. So let's go ahead and take both arms. As we inhale, lift up, really squeeze, and then exhale, round, tuck the tail, bring those arms together. Inhale, open, lift the chest, and then exhale, tuck the tail and the chin, but bring your arms and elbows together. And then inhale, lift up, look up, exhale, coil all of that in. Good, inhale, get some energy, get some breath into that upper body. So osteopenia, osteoporosis, you can get that in that thoracic spine and a lot of times in the low back and the hips. Good. But we are getting into that thoracic area, focusing on that space today. If you have the vertebral compression fractures, if you know you have those, take this easy here. Good, just take it gently, breathe into that space, visualize it getting strong and straight and supple and supportive. We want that so we don't round forward. We don't want to round forward. Good. We want to have those muscles in the front nice and long, not locked short. 
So go ahead and release those arms. Can you see how when we open up, feel when we open up the pec minor, it rolls those shoulders back. It doesn't draw us forward. Let's enhance that left thumb up, please. We're gonna open up one, two, three, and four. Pull the arm back as comfortably as you can. Look over the left shoulder. Feel the stretch, not only in the pec minor, but in the bicep. Bring it in four, pinky first, three, curl towards your palm. Now you got that thumb up. We're gonna look at our thumb at the bridge of our nose. Look at the thumbnail, cross eye at your nose. One more time, thumb, nose. Now look out at your index finger, pull the finger out away from the palm one at a time. Now this time more intensely, we're gonna draw the arm back, but then flex your hand, push the heel of the hand away, draw, draw your nails, fingernails toward your forearm, press, extend the hand, and then pull back in four, three, two, one. This time take your thumb behind the index finger and flick it up like a little flame. Work that thumb. Good work. We're taking it again, repetition, one, two, three, four, but we add on, arm pulls back, nails pull back, and then we turn and look over the right shoulder. So it's more intense, big breath. Look back over the left shoulder, bring it in four, three, two, one. This time circle that thumb like you're drawing a circle on the ceiling. Good, reverse it, go the other way. Circle that thumb, that's where arthritis sets in first. Last one, we're going out again. You want to really open up that pec minor. It gets so tight. Flex the hand, look right, add the head nods this time, two of them. Look back again at that left hand, bring it in four, three, two, one. But this time, keep bringing it across. Right arm hooks under, relax that shoulder back and down. Add on, stretching into the shoulder shoulder, front, back, and side, ear to the shoulder. Next stretch, two. Good work. Release. Notice how that shoulder is nicely relaxed. It goes right in its socket. Right thumb up. Good job. Look at the nail. Crisscross at your nose. Nail, nose, and one more time. Thumbnail gets the focus, and then your nose. <laughs> Look out and pull it back. One, two, three and four, look over your shoulder, just keep your wrist in line with your forearm first round. Now pinky into the palm first, four, three, two and one, good. Flick that thumb, good job. And take it up and we're gonna pull it back. One, two, three and four. This time pull the fingernails back, press through the heel of the hand, keep looking over the right shoulder. Come back in pinky first, four, three, two, one. Take the thumb behind the index finger, flick that thumb, strengthen the muscles, working that joint. Good job, thumb up, pull it back. One, two, three, and four. Pull the hand into extension, look over the left shoulder and nod two times. Yes, now we look back to the right, come back in one finger at a time. And then continue this arm parallel to the floor, all the way across, left forearm hooks under, relax that shoulder back and down and left ear relaxes to its shoulder. Breathe, good. Maybe lift that right arm a little bit more. Nice job, let's bring it in, shake it all about. Good work. Okay, shoulder roll up, back and around. We should be feeling a lot looser now. Open the pecs a bit, and we're gonna strengthen those rhomboids, work on shoulder mobility. Shoulder mobility plays a lot into our posture. Good. We don't have the ability to straighten our spine. We're gonna hunch our backs and roll forward. All these movements are a little more challenging if you're rounding forward. So we're gonna help open up that thoracic spine and bring in good posture. So elbow circles, left elbow up. We're gonna have our hand on our shoulder and roll it backwards. Good, a couple of times backwards, not gonna go forwards. We do enough forward rounding. 
Good job. Let's take it to the other side. So right arm, circle it back. Excellent job. Good, roll it back and then forward, around and around. Good, nice job. Now take that right arm, good work, and take that circle, two, three, and then all the way up. And then we're gonna take the, the sorry, that was the left, the right one, round, two, three, and take it up. Elbows in line with shoulders. Let's touch those elbows together. So everything's warm and everything's lubricated. Good. Hands on the shoulders. Just touch and open. Crisscross. Shoulders back and down. Good. Release that. Shoulder roll. And then just kind of ragdoll. Everything feels soft and loosey-goosey. Bend the elbows. Good. Roll around. Press. Feels good, loosey goosey. Now we're gonna change the vector, the angle a little bit. So we wanna get into the pec minor. And to do this, we're gonna take a hand to the elbow. This time, pull that elbow back, look at it, and then crisscross. You don't have to touch your knee, but just crisscross a little bit. We wanna include some neck work. So look at the elbow as you pull it back. It's a little tiny twist, not much. And then crisscross over. Good. We have a very large pectoralis muscle called the pec major. That is underneath the breast tissue. We're not focusing on that. We're focusing on the pectoralis minor. It's right in front of your shoulder and it really does affect our posture. It rounds us into a hunch when it's tight. So this is helping to open us up. Good. Now, let's take it to the other side. So right arm, we're gonna pull that elbow back. Look over your shoulder and then crisscross. Inhale, pull it back. And then exhale, crisscross, good. So it takes repetition, it takes several different things to stretch the front of us and strengthen the back. That's what gets that posture back to upright. Good. Look down at the floor. Nice, now go ahead and take it out and in again. All the way out, elbows in, good work. And then just release it, shake it out, march it out now. The next activity we're gonna do is called the airport scanner. Do you remember the last time you're on an airplane? Goodness, it's been years, right? So maybe some of you have flown, I haven't since 2020. But we know there's that too we step into, right? So we're not taking things we're not supposed to on the plane. So this next one, it can be challenging. We're going to try to get our arms here, but it's okay if you can't. Let's start with cactus. And then we're gonna take our arms up and overhead. So ideally fingertips face the ceiling. And then you can look, let's get our thumbs, oh, maybe about five, six inches apart. They don't have to touch. So that's our airport scanner, right? Relax your shoulders back and down. Elbows stay bent. Good job, we're gonna get into that thoracic spine. So let's lower those elbows as far as we can. Some of us can touch the waist, some of us not. Good. Now go ahead and come back up. Nicely done. The reason for this is to get our shoulder blades to glide along our spines. They are not adhered, the shoulder blades sit independently and should be able to glide up and down pretty well on your thoracic spine. If this is challenging, it's a good indicator that you've got some tight areas there in your muscles that are binding your shoulder girdle. Good, and we wanna open that up. Good, we wanna to go to a place where we're gliding. Nice. Shoulders should be nice and loose. That's gonna help our posture. Now shoulder plug, let's pull it all the way down. Feel those rhomboids engage, feel your shoulders, and then arms out in front. Palms up, take like you have a tray and right and left hand, ooh, squeeze, feel that engagement, and bring it back in. Good, squeeze out to the side, bring it in. Nice, good. Go in and out, feel how tall and straight that makes us the spine, open and close. This tray move makes us nice and tall, in and out. Very good. 
Keep those elbows glued to your rib cage. Oh, nice. Now hold that out, hold it here. Woo, three, two, one, shake it out. Namaste hands again, press, press, press. Now this time we're gonna press and we're gonna twist. So most times I say, just turn your, just push your elbow. This time we're twisting. So turn to your right, your thumb stay in front of your heart. Inhale center, and then twist to your left. Keep pressing your hands. You got it, come back in. Let's take it again one more time to each side. Good work, back through center to the other side. Oh my, good work. Now let's exchange this with cactus. Inhale tall, cactus arms twist to the left, exhale. Inhale, are your ears over your shoulders or are you jutting your head forward? Gosh, we jut that head forward and we don't even realize it. So pull it back. Good work. Keeps twisting. Oh, nice job. One more time to each side. Oh, good work. Now we're going to come back and do more hand flap, arm flapping. So hands to those hip pockets and we're going to go in and out just a few times couple of breaths. You can do this all throughout the day, guys, like a little bird, little bird flapping its wings. Shake out the arms, shake out the legs. Great work in that posture. Check out your posture. Are you rounding forward? Is your head jutting forward, right? Keep those rhomboids strong. Good job. Keep those shoulder blades together. Let's just do some pelvic circles to get into the hips a little bit too. Shoulders got a lot of movement. Let's just roll those hips around. This brings blood flow here. So if we have arthritis in our hips, we need blood flow there, right? Good, make sure you're leaning back too and reverse that, go the other way. Excellent job. Loosening up the hips, it's like WD-40 on the hip. <laughs> And then let's put those feet out in front of us and come forward and lean back. So front of center and back of center. Good. Oh, that feels good too. This is really working the hips in a way that's very lubricating. All right. Now we're gonna to come to our seated position and just lift the hip one and then the other. You can pick up the pace, you can slow it down. That's kind of like you're marching or dancing. Good. My chair squeaking. Three, two, and then just a seated march. Just pump those arms, pick up the feet. By the way, we're working a lot of balancing muscles that we need, so this is good for balance. Go three, two, and one. Nice. Let's sit back and sit tall. Slide your hands to your knees. Just rest your chest on your thighs. We're going to stretch our backs a little bit so your head can stay in line with your spine looking at the floor especially if we have high blood pressure or even low blood pressure glaucoma head stay up if you feel okay and you don't have those issues feel free to lower your head using the weight of your head to stretch your back a little yeah now use your hands and press on up to sit beautiful Right hand comes outside the left knee, just gentle twist from your rib, your shoulder, then your head. Lengthen tall, broaden your collarbone area. Inhale, come out of that twist. Exhale, gentle twist to the other side, not too much, just right. That Goldilocks approach, not too much, not too little. Beautiful. Let's come to center, sit tall, palms face up. How are you feeling head to toe, feeling taller? Got those shoulders back and down? I highly encourage you doing some of these exercises out throughout the day. It really will realign you nicely. Let's inhale up, pulling in gratitude for our yoga practice, our healthy bodies, our fabulous community here at the Senior Center. Thank you so much for joining and be well. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms. Take good care of yourselves and I'll see you again on Monday, everybody. Take good care, bye-bye. Thank you. Are, are we having class on uh, next Friday? Are we having a class next Friday? Is that a holiday? No, you having, you're going to Hawaii. I am going on Saturday. Oh, okay. Have a wonderful trip.
Thank you. So after that, I'll be out for a little while. So I will be back then the two weeks Friday. Okay. Thank you very much. There will be lots of recordings. All right. Thanks. Thank have a good weekend. Thank you. Yes, everybody have a good weekend. You too. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.